Good afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Jeannie D, and this is Afternoon Express. And I'm Bonnie Burley. Welcome indeed. So before we get into today's discussion, apparently the bold and the beautiful cast members Thorsten K and Catherine Kelly Lang accepted their 13th consecutive win at the International TV Audience Awards yesterday Yay. at the 58th Monte Carlo TV Festival. Amazing, amazing. Catherine Kelly Lang, I think it was Brooke. Yeah. She played Brooke. I know. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm such a fan. <laughs> Once again, they've definitely proved this, uh, and proved the staying power of the world's most popular daytime soapy. So a big congratulations to the cast and the crew of The Bold and the Beautiful conti for continuing to be pioneers in television. And if you ever need an extra, <laughs> I'm here, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> now, the topic of today's show is a contentious one. The question we're asking is, should women have the choice to take leave when affected by their menstrual cycle? And if you want to add your thoughts to the conversation, then tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. Exactly. And in order to fully engage the topic, we need to first properly unpack how the menstrual cycle works. So we've invited um, a speci uh, specialist gynecologist, Dr. Carol Thomas, to the show. Of course. And then we turn our focus to the emotional and psychological aspects of how, of how culture plays a role in the way women perceive their cycle and feel. Yeah. And we look at two organizations that are making a positive difference. Princess D Menstrual Cups, founded by entrepreneur Shamila Ramjawan, and provides girls with reusable and affordable menstrual products. Plus, an NGO called Femme Project emphasizes comprehensive sexual education in schools. So having your first period is a daunting experience and one that is clouded by uncertainty, embarrassment, and a bit of stigma. And here's what some ladies had to say about theirs. Okay, so it is quite a hectic story. I literally screamed. Yeah, it happened. You know, you, it gets explained to you about what kind of occurs when you do get your period for the first time, but no one quite prepares you for the actual feeling of, you know, bleeding. Yo, I ran to my grandmother and I was like, Mom, 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 I'm bleeding. What's going on? Mom, bleeding. She's like, where are you bleeding? And I told her from my vagina. And then I went to my mom and I said, I think I have my period. And then she was cross at me and shouted at me because I didn't tell her that I had my period while we were at the mall and we had nothing at home. And my grand then went and she made me a pad out of towels and safety pins. I was alone. I was with strangers. I felt embarrassed because I had bled all over. Wow, and joining us now on the couch is uh, Dr. Carol Thomas to chat to us about the intricacies of the menstrual cycle. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you very much, <laughs> thank you very much. So, I mean, we all take for granted that we know what the entire menstrual cycle is about and what actually happens in our bodies when we are on our period. Can you just take us through it? Well, the first period usually is very much like your clip. Uh, you think you're dying and then someone tells you your body is your temple and you must stop uh, playing with boys, which none of that actually makes any logical sense to a young woman having her first period. Yeah. But from a biological and physiological point of view, we all are born with X number of eggs. They eventually run out uh, at the menopause. But on our way to our first period, we lose quite a few. Mm -hmm. Initially, with adolescence, there will be other changes, those breast buds, the training bra, uh, you start getting hair at funny places. Um, and then finally, after this uh, sort of growth spurt, when you have to change shoe size a few <laughs> times, um, that's about six months later, you get your first period. And essentially, it, it represents the, I like thinking it of soil, of where the embryo would have landed, but because it was unused, it then is shed every month. Um, in fact, there in, in uh, uh, Greek mythology, they talk about the weeping of the disappointed womb, which mm. quite frankly, um, you know, it, I suppose that that is what it is. Um, uh, the, and pregnancy had not happened, then you would in fact bleed. But it is, does not represent the time when the egg is released. Uh, and uh, I've heard women say that when I have a period, the egg is coming out. The egg is not coming out at that time. It would have come out if you have a regular cycle, right. which is essentially between 21 and 32 days, uh, 25 and uh, 32 days. Then the, the ovulation, in other words, the release of that mini-me uh, or half a mini-me would come out 
uh, at 14 days before you start bleeding. Right. And what are the circumstances of an irregular period? Well, the reason I, I mentioned 25 to 32 days is that if your periods stay away, everybody immediately recognizes that you're not releasing an egg, so you're not ovulating. Mm. However, an irregular period where you have either less than 25 days or the length between two bleeds exceeds 32 days can be considered as irregular. Um, also in women, they may talk about uh, clockwork periods, but actually yeah, very few women are exactly uh, at 28 days and uh, that in itself is cloaked in mysticism of the lunar month. Right. So as long as you have a regular period uh, from uh, 25 to 32 days, uh, one can consider yourself as being fertile on your history. Yeah. Because it is the way that we used to know when women, uh, with the first question uh, your gynecologist may ask you is, when was your last period? Yes. Um, and and uh, it, it, you almost ready, you know, when did, was that, whether you have an app or whether you're just writing it down or whether you're just waiting for the rhythm and you kind of know when it isn't there that there's a problem. Um, so the, the timing of, of the periods really is important in knowing what that means. Yeah. If, you, if the, uh, the period shortens, that's uh, also non-ovulation. And if it exceeds mm -hmm. uh, 35 days, you're definitely not ovulating. Wow, um, okay. And that needs investigation. That's not a normal phenomenon. When you don't have periods, it's easy to say there's something wrong. But when you sort of have a period every month, that's where women need to jot it down. And pay attention. They need not be anal about it, but to say, okay, well, that happened here. Let's check the, the rhythm of the next two or three months. Okay. Well, we'll chat a little bit more later on. So make sure you head over to our social media platforms and add your thoughts to the conversation. Do you think that women should have the choice to take leave when affected by their menstrual cycle? Well, tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. And after the break, we focus our conversation on the psychological, emotional and cultural aspects of menstruation. Plus, we head to the kitchen for a healthy, lactose-free and meat-free cauliflower pasta We'll be right back. Express yourself. Express yourself. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, the topic of today's conversation is the menstrual cycle, and ultimately, we're asking the question, should women have the choice to take leave when affected by their period? Now, we looked at the physical component before the break, and we're joined now by psychologist and academic researcher, Professor Michelle Ander Patton to look at the emotional, psycholo psychological and cultural aspects of the menstrual cycle. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank so you. how does, we know what the, what the menstrual yeah. cycle does from a physical point of view, but how does it affect us mentally and our moods? Yeah. And is PMS a thing? Because <laughs> I, when I am PMSing, it is the end of the world. See, and for me, it's nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> she says so. She thinks. <laughs> um, I think that's a very important question for many people, not just women, but for men, because it affects everybody around the woman who is having her menstruation. Yeah. So it's, it's something very real. Um, I think the one difficulty about emotions are that people cannot pinpoint it always pinpointed so yeah. it's something in your head it's something that's not real but I think what's important for women to recognize is that at certain times of the month when you are experiencing your PMS is to acknowledge to yourself that I am in a slightly different frame of mind I am in a slightly different state of mind and, and that's okay um, rather than pathologizing and I'm PMSing and it's that time of the month and there's something wrong inherently wrong mm. with me um, I think um, Dr. Thomas will probably be able to tell you much better than I can that there is a link between the emotions and the hormones okay. and I think it's important that we acknowledge that as women. So around that time of the month is not a good idea to text your ex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa has quite a diverse culture and what are the different views or perceptions that are held around culturally especially yeah. um, around menstruation? menstruation. 
I think you're right, there's, there's a diversity of views. Um, I think a lot of it's influenced by religion and religious institutions. So irrespective of culture that you come from, sometimes the religious background that you come from determines um, how you view menstruation. And I think what's important to look at is how these messages are transferred generationally and from woman to woman. And so many people view the body as unclean, as ritually unclean. Mm. And so when women interact with other people and with other men according to certain cultural traditions, those people are also considered as being defiled and unclean. Wow. So um, there's still a lot of stigma, um, lots of shame. Um, it, it's a topic that's so silenced that people don't ordinarily and easily speak about. And that really does need to, yeah. to have a major turnaround. And as a Absolutely. result of that, do you find that those women, in, in particularly in those cultural groups, view menstruation as burdensome and something that they hate? Absolutely. I mean, all studies show that women regard it as a very natural process, but very bothersome and mm. a real nuisance at times. Oh. So it's, it's not um, something that's ordinarily welcomed. Um, for many women. I love it because then yeah. that's when I get to eat all the chocolate I want and I have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny, and you're still so disciplined with it. But now there's obviously varying degrees on how bad your, your moods, I suppose, mm. and the psychological mm. impact mm. of PMS can go. Mm. How bad can it get? Can it affect you psychologically? Yeah, no, no, point? definitely. I mean, if you look at the DSM, um, which is the classificatory system that we use in psychology, you have something called premenstrual dysphoric disorder. What is that? Um, and that is sort of your extreme PMSing, um, where women experience anger, rage for prolonged periods of time, and it can get so bad where women have suicidal thoughts and suicidal really? ideations. Whoa. So it's not something that must be taken lightly. No. Um, I think women need to find spaces to express, to talk about what they are feeling and to find the necessary help that they're needing if it is as severe as that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for chatting to us today about this. And obviously we're going to be exploring this topic a whole lot more a little bit a little later. Clover No Lack. Lactose-free milk that lets you enjoy dairy again. Made with love by Clover. Now, if you are lactose intolerant, then listen up. Clover No Lack is a lactose-free milk that tastes sweeter than regular milk, but without the added sugar. So this delicious and creamy milk can be enjoyed on its own or with cereal. But today, mm, we are using it to make a delicious cauliflower fettuccine dish. Now, if you'd like to try this recipe, simply SMS the keyword Clover to 33650. Clem, pasta is... And I mean, you all know it. It's definitely the perfect comfort food after a long day. And we all like <laughs> How do we get started? How much cheese being in Italian dishes, don't we? Yes. So, like, if you are an Italian food lover and you can't have any cheese, you're kind of like no, you're done. exactly. You're it's devastating. Exactly. So, what we're gonna we've actually made a beautiful Alfredo sauce using no dairy at all. Okay. It's really delicious. So, in this pot, I've got some. Mushrooms that are browned off, some clover no lac, some garlic, some thyme, and cauliflower. Delicious. All right, cauliflower we know has a creamy element to it, yes. and mushrooms we know quite meaty actually. Yeah. So I'm going to start spooning this. Scooping I see how you're stepping up. back because you know me. I want this in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm not wearing an apron, so. No, you're not. Oh, so, this already looks good. I mean, you see, I could mix well. pasta just with that. You really could, absolutely. But we're going to make it like a nice, creamy, thick Alfredo sauce. Yes. I'm going to get as much as this, of the clover no lack in there. Oh, I'm Alfredo. This is going to be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> OK, to this, some nutritional yeast. And we've been working with that quite a bit now. Yeah. We really love it. It's, that's going to substitute our cheese flavour, because it does kind of taste parmesan. you like, exactly. all of it. Exactly, all of it. All right, I'm actually, actually vegans use nutritional liquid. yeast instead of cheese. Yeah, it nutritional works. Nutritional really yeast does. and nuts ground down is actually vegan parmesan. Mm-hmm, exactly. Then, listen in class. I've got some cashews for you that I've been soaking in my clover no lac. Okay. That can go into our blender as well. Yeah. So uh, once you soak cashews, you're actually activating them, hey, mm -hmm. to make to bring all the goodness out of them. And what it also does is once they break down, it becomes just like cream. It even thickens sauces. Really? So we're going to get that texture that we normally find with Alfredo's. Let and it's on. good for you. It's easier to digest we'll do, okay. once you've... Oh, we'll do, wait. Oh, yeah, no, a little bit of salt now. Okay. Maybe end at the end again. Okay. And then blitz it. Give it a blitz. Okay. I hope I've closed this properly. Because <laughs> that'll be fun. There you go. 
And not too much because you want it quite thick, hey? Exactly. One, two, three. Got that. Okay, so you can pour that over our pasta salon, which we got over there. We got oh, some no fettuccine. Okay. I'm just gonna break up some mushrooms in the meantime. Ooh, ooh, sorry. Oh, sorry. You got it. I got the muscles. Okay. <laughs> the there you go. Like, Claire, why did you help Jeannie? Because Jeannie's got this. I've got this. All right. All of it. You've got some tongs there on the side Do as well. Do you want all of it in? Because we all want it quite creamy. I, I like the saucy pasta. Ooh, this is so... <laughs> you like a saucy everything. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> OK, cool. OK, and can I ton it? You can kind of mix them up a bit, get the sauce in there. You can plate that up in your nice fancy oh, bowl. Oh, my word, this is so oh. great. I'm loving you. I'm definitely having this for dinner tonight. Go for it. Tasty. What are you doing there? I'm busy browning with some mushrooms. Okay, for what? Just for the topping? Yeah, for the topping. Why is it popping? Thyme, really great. When you fry it, it releases all the flavour into the oil. Yeah. But it does pop like popcorn. So be careful, just step back. Okay. And do its thing. But you got it. Okay, can show me can your baking skills? Oh no, this is now pressure. Okay, there you go. I can marry an Italian after you all. Can. <laughs> Let's get that in. Win. Oh, oh, Italian size portions, I love it. Jeannie, you're winning. It's rustic, it's Italian. Exactly. And then? Oh, how many people am I going to... There we go. That's Done. my dish. And a little sprinkle. This is one we made earlier as well. Ah. But look at that. And presto Italiano. Lovely. Well Thank you so much. And I, all I need now is a fork and a spoon to eat it the <laughs> proper Italian way. It's so simple to make. And remember, if you want to give the scrumptious recipe a go, SMS Clover to 33650. And in case you missed any of the steps, here is a quick recap. Where's the fork? <laughs> So remember to add your comment to our discussion for the day. Do you think that women should have the chance to take leave when affected by their menstrual cycle? Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. After the break, it's time for our midweek pet feature. Today we're looking at balanced feeding for your pup. Plus we chat to Petro Laranjo from Just One Thing 365 about their work with pet rescue organizations. Clover No Lack. Lactose free milk that lets you enjoy dairy again. Made with love by Clover. Now, it's that time of the week where we turn the attention to our furry friends. Our little donut is growing up so quickly. Not so little anymore. <laughs> and making sure that she gets the correct nutrition and uh, nutrients she needs is very, very important to us. Come here, girl. <laughs> <laughs> A balanced diet is an essential part of maintaining good health. And as we do with Donut, pet owners are responsible for making sure that our furry friends receive the correct amount of nutrients to keep them healthy. Ashley Sanderson is in studio to tell us more about balanced feeding. Welcome to The Laugh. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you very much. So it's very important to keep our pets healthy um, with the right kind of balanced nutrition. What sets pedigree apart from other dog foods? So first of all, pedigree is uh, a tailored nutrition for your dog size. And that, what that means is that we are specific to small, medium and large breed dogs, where the kibble is designed specifically for the size of the dog's mouth because small, medium and large dogs have different size mouths. Mm. Uh, we also have special ingredients uh, like chondroitin in our large breed dogs, which helps with their joints for later on in life because we know they carry in a little bit of heavy weight. Um, and for the smaller dogs, they have a, a special ingredient on the kibble, which is added extra dental protection because their teeth are really, really important. Yeah. 
And so what makes smaller dogs special? So smaller dogs have a, um, a lot of special needs, more so than medium and larger dogs. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more fussier with their food, so pedigree's food is really, really tasty. Mm -hmm. um, they also have really small mouths, so as mentioned before, we have a kibble size that's specific to the small dog's mouth, um, with added dental protection, um, because a lot, later on in life, a lot of their health issues are mm. stem from uh, bad oral care. Why is it important for us to include wet food in a dog's diet? So just like you and I, um, we both like variety in our food. So wet um, offers variety and textures to the dog, as well as it adds a little bit of hydration, which uh, small mm. dogs generally need because they're not drinking enough water during the day. Yes, and I'm sure they get quite busy. Yes, <laughs> yes. Apart from just making sure that your dog is getting a balanced meal, what other do's and don'ts uh, apply when it comes to feeding? So I think the big one is not to overfeed your dog. Um, so not to just fill the bowl up to its max, uh, rather get a measuring cup and um, use the feeding guidelines on the back of pack to that is specific to your dog, yeah. whether it's small or medium or large breed dog, and um, make sure that you're not overfeeding the dog because then this will ensure that they live longer and lead a healthier lifestyle. Yes, absolutely, as with humans. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, Ashley. Thank you very much. So with such a wide variety of options on the market, it's up to you as a pet owner to make sure that your dog is receiving the correct amount of daily nutrition. Giving your dog a 100% nutritionally complete and balanced diet is easy with brands like Pedigree. Now, just one thing, 365 started a unique campaign to highlight the vulnerability of pets in need, especially during the cold winter months, and managed to acquire more than 800 blankets through donations. Founder Petra Laranja, Laranjo uh, gives us this afternoon to, to give us more insight into the organization and the amazing work that they are doing. Welcome to the show, Petra. Thank you so much, Jeannie. So what a fantastic concept, and congratulations, because the campaign actually launched today. Correct. So take me through the campaign okay fantastic and so, your vision well just one thing 365 yeah. is based on trying to inspire you and help you do just one thing 365 days a year to make a difference in the okay. life of another nice. so whether it's human animal or the planet this campaign in particular is for the animals so I put together a campaign which shows the vulnerability of animals that are homeless out there um, all animals that are in shelters so they're in in their skins they have no protection they have no blanket mm. thousands of them die over the winter period and we need to change that so I literally called on some amazing people we've got 69 ambassadors in total incredible. we did some incredible pictures with them there we go um, there's one of our celebrity ambassadors and all of these dogs featured are shelter dogs so we're hoping wow. to get all of them homed and Amazing. obviously all the other pets in the shelters as well so it's um recognize that face <laughs> <laughs> that's our floor manager lucian doesn't he Love look that. fabulous in that <laughs> shot Gorgeous, Lucian. So You're Lucian amazing. sat with us at Doug, which is in Cape Town. Yeah. Um, and they've got the most incredible. So we're working with Doug in Cape Town. I mean, I rescue. didn't recognize Lucian without his top on, but he does <laughs> look very, very dashing. <laughs> like, Who else is part of the campaign? Um, so we have, you'll know really well, Christopher Jafter, Jonathan Boyd yes, Lee. Yes, we love when they take their tops you off. You know, all the girls are going to be so happy when they <laughs> see those photos. So yeah, so we launched this morning on Instagram and Facebook. So just one thing, 365. And we really really just want people to get on board so whether they're donating a blanket you know yeah. new or used doesn't matter as long as they're clean and then um, even five rand helps because if we can get a million people to donate five rand we're making huge impact 100 exactly. percent of the fees or the donations go towards helping our shelters pay off their bills yeah. which is about 50 to 80 thousand rand every month wow so we're really trying to just make a difference where we can and exactly you know, we don't have to do all these extraordinary feats. So many times people don't help because they think, oh, you know, I don't it have the time. So much. It's overwhelming. Yeah. So we're really a platform to try and help you do just one thing. Exactly. That's easy, that's doable, that's practical. So with this campaign, it's really about raising awareness for sheltered animals, you know, really encouraging people to adopt and to rescue. There's no need to breed and buy. If someone specifically wants to breed, you can go to Husky Rescue or Pitbull Rescue or Staffy Rescue or Poodle Rescue, whatever. Okay. So there's a rescue centre there for every breed that you're looking for. That is amazing. You know, and also if you consider that about 10,000 pets are put down every day. 10,000 pets on are average. put down every day? On, on every Why? day. Why? Because they just don't have loving homes? There's not or... enough homes. You know, people let their pets breed, so now there's another litter. 
and they might try and help or try and find homes for their litter but then there's all these oh, others that, that number are is tremendously high you know, that is very worrying is. actually so we don't need to be breeding we, exactly. you know, we need to sterilize we don't need to be buying so sure. our urge is really you know there's nothing wrong with rescue dogs um, there's nothing wrong with them they're not broken yeah. they just unfortunately were let down by us so we need to do better so oh, yeah okay. so we just really want to make a difference in the lives of all these beings you know be a voice for those that don't have voices yeah. Um, find your new best friend this yeah. winter. If you can't adopt, foster this winter. A lot of the shelters are open to adoption. I mean, sorry, to fostering yeah. just for the winter. Oh, volunteer. that's beautiful. Petri, you do such amazing work. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much you, for telling Jamie. us. And of course, all of the details are on our website, Afternoon Express. Thank you so amazing. much for being Thank here. Thank you for your time. They're cute, they're cuddly, and they're TV stars. Baxter and Donut, the adorably fluffy four-legged members of the Afternoon Express family, are sharing their daily adventures on social media. To see what Baxter and Donut get up to behind the scenes, follow the adventures of Baxter and the adventures of Donut on Instagram. We now turn our attention back to the topic of today's discussion, and we're joined now by Kim, who is the founder of FEM Project, a nonprofit organization for comprehensive sexual education in schools. But first, let's quickly take a look at this video that the organization has produced. Excuse me. Um, my name is Kim Vinsbogel, and I'm a co-director of FEM Project. We, that stands for Freedom of Education Motivate Empowerment. We do workshops in high schools focusing on comprehensive sexual education and sexual and reproductive health and rights. Embracing the period to me means you start to understand it. At school they try to teach you but they don't try to teach you the nuances of emotions and of what it really can feel like, the weight of it. Trying to change you know the whole red stain or the red thing that comes with period into an empowering thing I think that we need to get to kids before puberty strikes, before they become awkward about absolutely everything in their lives. Um, doesn't matter what gender they are. Um, I think that's a way that we can guide the narrative uh, to be more inclusive of different identities and of you know different ways of seeing the period. For those that would listen, listen. Wow, great video. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, <laughs> lovely to have you. I love your t-shirts, the reproductive organs, the vagina. Oh, yeah, the one I was wearing it. in the video. Feeling it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Fem Projects, what yes. is your objective as an organization? Our objective as an organization is to get comprehensive sexual education in all schools across South Africa. Um, many people will ask, uh, but isn't life orientation a subject that is mandatory and we'll say yes it is but many times it does not include the various identities um, in terms of various sexual orientations or the various gender identity and expressions that we have um, within our society yeah. and I'm talking obviously specifically about the lesbian and gay community the trans community intersex community these things are not discussed within life orientation uh, life orientation comes from a space of when we speak about sex we speak about sex from a heterosexual perspective yeah. and we should be more inclusive and more sensitive to learners who might not have that sexual orientation because mm -hmm. not only women menstruate oh yeah that's another thing um, people assume that only women menstruate but as we go deeper into the discussion we're realizing especially in the western world that gender is a spectrum um, and indigenous cultures have known this for hundreds of years. Um, but the Western world is only picking up on this now. Uh, within our society, we believe that everything is binary, so it's in twofold. So your sex is either male or female, or your gender is either, either woman or man. But that excludes a lot of identities. I mentioned intersex identities. They have yeah. different sex characteristics and it doesn't fit into the binary. So we need to include that um, when we speak about these things. Um, and that is why, coming back to why I said that it's not only women who menstruate, you have people with a vagina and a uterus who identifies being a man, and you have people with a penis or who has a prostate who identifies as being a woman, mm. because gender is something that is taught yeah. Yes, right. yeah. so by society. And in your sex education campaigns and just educating young women yeah. about the menstrual cycle, what are you finding are, are the missing links? I mean, I, I, when I look back at life orientation in school, mm. whenever sex came mm. up or, or sex education, it was just giggles and it was just treated yeah. in such yes. a... But don't you find also such the narrative, the way you just, told, is yes. so yeah. scientific. It's not made beautiful, yeah. so it's yes. not made to And it's just rushed through, like we're quickly yeah. going to... 
give you a few pointers about this and move right along. Yeah. Don't yeah, enjoy it. Don't, yeah. Don't do it. My friends said that when they had their first periods, they were just given a pad, you know, and no, no one yeah. was like, told them about the cycle. And I think the missing link is that we haven't been told our parents don't know so what they don't know about they're not going to teach to us um, men also have been excluded from the conversation sure. completely when i was at school um these Nonprofits would come to our schools and they'd say, okay, all the boys go back to the classrooms, all the girls stay here, we're gonna have some girl time. Okay, and all of a sudden yeah. it's just like the secret thing. And then afterwards they say, now don't go telling the boys what you, you know we're taught. No, here. but boys need to know. Exactly. Need to know. Because when they're dealing with crazy genie afterwards, <laughs> they yeah. need to know exactly yeah. what's cooking. Exactly. There. And, and you know, we notice it in our bonnie. behavior, or crazy <laughs> bonnie. Uh, when we, we notice it in our behavior in our conversation mm. spaces, where if there's a man in the room and you suddenly want to speak about menstruation yes. we quickly apologize to the man like sorry i'm just gonna have to talk about this and then yes. they're like act like they know like yeah yeah i know i shouldn't be hearing this and it's, that actually should stop yeah. exactly it should stop so the missing link to me is the education on all fronts and just the acceptance that we should be narrating the narrative from a different perspective we should be more inclusive sure. we should be more open about these things we should be more transparent about it and not feel ashamed i think that's a word that always comes up in our workshops shame you know um my mom said that all of a sudden i heard dr carol said this my mom said that if you get your period now it means you're hanging out with boys i mean mm. this is a lot of misinformation stories. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. indeed yeah it's wow. not helpful thank, thank you, you so really much good work. you're thank doing you. amazing work thank you very much and of course all of your details will be on our website as well thank you <laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, girls missing school due to their period is a massive issue in South Africa. Yeah, exactly. Social entrepreneur Shamila Ramjawan was inspired to address this problem, and she created the Princess D Menstrual Cup, a device that can be reused for up to 10 years and serves as an affordable alternative to the increasingly expensive disposable sanitary products. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I love the name Princess D because Princess I actually D. thought you were talking about me. About <laughs> 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 but what exactly is the Princess D cup? Okay, so, so Princess D, where the name came about, is it's actually named after my daughter. Okay. Um, she's uh, Princess okay. D, Princess Daksha. Uh -huh. And uh, so I actually uh, decided that I want to launch my own product because it's, it's very expensive, uh, you know, to get overseas brands into, the, into South Africa. And that's when I launched the Princess D menstrual cup. So it's amazing, it's eco-friendly, it's hygienic, it's cost-effective, it's, uh, it's a solution for the girls to keep them in school. And that is my main you know, priority in life, is to give back and to make sure that our girls, our future leaders of tomorrow, have something sustainable. Yeah. So, I mean, do, 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 does the, the cup come accompanied with maybe instructions on how to use it? Do you guys mm. hold workshops teaching the girls how to use them? Because I've used a menstrual cup before, and I find that as an, even as an adult, it's quite a responsibility in terms of you have to keep it clean. There's just a way of handling it. And mm. so do you educate the girls? Absolutely. So currently we have uh, corporate sponsors um, from the private sector that actually now buy the product from us. So we actually go out into the rural areas and do the activation around it, where we train the girls how to insert, how to remove move, how long to, to keep it there. And you know, we also create that conversation, you know, we need to smash the shame, break the taboos around menstruation. Exactly. And that is important for us to actually go out there and educate these girls with regards to the cup. We don't leave unless they know how to use the cup. Mm. So how does it work? Do you have one with you? And can you show us how, how it actually works? Yes. And how yours, is, how yours differs, I suppose, to others on the market? Yes. So I do have one. Okay. Okay, so this is the menstrual cup. Yeah. Um, I actually call it the magic cup because it's yeah. amazing. You know, you can leave it in for up to 12 hours. Exactly. So there are various ways to fold it. That's the U-fold or the C-fold. Then you have the punch-down fold like that. Mm. And then you have the roll fold. So the common fold is a punch-down and you just fold it into a little fold like that. Mm -hmm. So the younger girls actually find it more comfortable. And then you just squat, you insert, it pops. So it forms a seal against your vaginal wall. And all your menstrual fluid will fall directly into the cup. 
So you can leave it in for up to 12 hours. So you can swim, you can gym, you can do any type of sport. It's no excuse for the girls not to attend school not anymore. Not to attend school. Right. And uh, so at the end of the 12 hour period, or whenever they feel they want to remove it, they just actually just press the bottom. It releases a suction and you gently pull it out and you empty into a toilet or wash basin. Rinse, fold, reinsert. That's the process. Okay. So you can sleep with it. Um, so the ideal is to actually empty it twice a day in the yeah. evening and then in the morning. Yeah. And yeah. then at the end of the cycle, they will actually wash their cup and put it in. This is actually quite cool. Jeannie, back to your question, what makes us different from the rest? Yes. We have the sterilizer cup. So you're going to wash your cup, put it in here, boiling water, leave it aside for 15 minutes and it's sterilized. And yes. it's sterilized, yes, because yes, that's really important. And also what's really cute is for women on the go and girls on the go, you can store your menstrual cup in here and stick it in your school bag or your handbag. Exactly. So that's and amazing. always just keep it handy nice with you. Neat. Absolutely. And it's a one-stop solution. Exactly. Yeah. So what has been the feedback on the yeah. use of it? Kids Absolutely it. amazing. You know, um, um, Pastor Semenya and I own the company and we are doing amazing work Globally. Custer is incredible. Thank you. I love her. I spent some time with her recently and she's an amazing, amazing person. Hi, Custer, if you're watching Hi, Kasta, me. Hi, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are doing lots of girls globally. We're in 20 countries now mm. with wow. the menstrual cap. We're now going to the Middle East, another six countries that we're adding on. Yeah. So we're the biggest brand in the world at the moment, you know, with visibility. Um, so for me, my passion, it's just not a job. Yeah. You know, it's about giving back and it's about making a difference, yeah. making a huge impact. And that's exactly what I aim to do. And now the actual makeup of it, I mean, what is it made of? Because if, to be able to be inside a woman for up to 12 hours, it obviously can't be like a foreign object that will cause any kind of effect or infections. And also for the younger girls, um, I know a lot of parents worry about if it you know, kind of displaces or affects the, the hymen. hymen. Yes. So the, the cup itself is made from medical grade silicone. It's FDA approved. It can't be SABS approved because there's no standard to match it against. Um, so it's the Food and Drug Association approved. Yeah. And uh, we actually do very stringent testing on our cup. And we found that uh, most girls and women actually take to the cup, to the Princess D menstrual cup, okay. no matter how low or how, how high your cervix is. So with regards to the hymen, you know, um, we actually found a solution. Uh, we found that with the me uh, menstrual cup, when you fold and insert, you actually don't push it right up towards your cervix. Okay. So it's, it, this actually sits on the opening of the vagina. Okay. So it's easy oh. to maneuver when you're actually pulling it out oh. as well. And is it comfortable? Won't Absolutely. you feel it? You actually won't feel it in you. Okay. So it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing product. Yeah, it is really, yes. truly innovative. And yeah. eco-friendly. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, we all it's have to go to something like 30,000 tampons? 3,000. 3,000, 3, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you so but if many. you look at the cost of sanitary products these days, yeah. I mean, this combo pack costs 300 rand. For ten years, yeah. and if That's you do the math, discussion, the price on sanitary it's two hundred fifty a month, which is nothing, absolutely yeah. nothing. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thanks for it's having really, me. Really, really fantastic. Now, of course, join us after the break as we sit down with all of today's guests to discuss the question: Should women have the choice to take leave when affected by their menstrual cycle? Now, if you want to add your thoughts, then tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on the Facebook page. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, we've had an educational conversation today, shedding light on a topic that is often shied away from on public forums. Now, the question we're asking now is, should women have the choice to take leave when affected by their menstrual cycle? We're back on the couch with our fantastic guests to discuss. And everybody on social media says yes, by the way. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> says we should take leave. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you ladies think? Yeah, you're nay to the leave? Um, if I could start, I think one needs to be quite cautious um, and yeah. I'm not sure if it should be a blanket, yes. Um, I think experiences are very different for different women. Um, what I do feel we need to start demonstrating far more is compassion. Yeah. Um, so when a woman says that I'm not well for, you know, my menstrual, because I'm menstruating, we should listen and be compassionate and find ways to support her. Yeah. Um, in whichever surrounding she finds herself. Exactly. So for me, um, 
Not quite yes, not quite no. Because it is different for different women. Like some yeah. women have like quite severe, but, but I mean, for me, I'm just planning my period leave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it would also give away to women just using it as an excuse to not show up and, and, yes. and be on leave. I agree with um, Michelle uh, when she says it's not a blanket statement. Um, I did some research and there's a country, Zambia, they actually have period leave. Um, they mm. call it Mother's Day. I mean, obviously you don't have to be a mother to have period leave, Sweet. but it's not mandatory, it's not enforced. Yeah. So you can call in and you have one day in Zambia that you can have yeah. off for, you know, maybe your second day. Maybe you know on second day it's very heavy, I'm tired, I'm, it's painful. Maybe you have endometriosis, maybe you have PCOS. Yeah. Um, and on those days you can then stay at home, maybe even work from home. There's also two provinces in China that do the same thing. Yeah. A lot of the backlash came from people who said, what if they, you know, just use it as an excuse, it's going to be unproductive, etc., etc. But they realized after doing research that productivity amongst menstruating people who had access to um, the leave yeah. actually went up. Okay, but my yeah. argument isn't about productivity. Mm. It's then being, a, it's almost a, a accountability because then yeah. won't the other men in the room think, oh, she's going to take it, it's, and it'll see, so it'll use be seen it as, as an as excuse a, as, as to further yeah, it'll put be seen women as down. A handicap. Yeah. Yes, now that Ultimately. goes back to my point. Or exclude um, you. Hmm. I actually feel that it shouldn't be allowed because we're fighting for gender equality. And yeah. here now we're saying we have to give women preference for menstrual cycles. So, so I have, that's very debatable, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, um, so yes, I think in severe circumstances, yes, she should be mm. able to take off from work, but not, you know, people are going to abuse that, yeah. like everything else. Yeah, I absolutely, I hear you. And I hear, it, the gender equality argument is a really strong one. Yes. And I think already um, in patriarchal spaces, um, males are already looking for ways mm. to exclude women or keep them out of the conversation. Mm. Absolutely, and we want women in the boardrooms. Yeah, exactly. we do. You know, we, that's more what we're women. fighting we need for. More women we in the board, exactly. boardrooms, so. not women who are at home. Yes, yeah. you know, being granted, and then because then I think it will. There's a difference between compassion and. Uh, What's patronizing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My words escape me sometimes. But the thing is, we're already going through that. We're already being patronized when you're on your period and you're at, at work. Yeah. So, I don't know, for me it's kind of like, again, it needs to be in certain um, cases. I don't think that you should just have it off just because you have your period. Myself, I see myself as period privileged. I have, I can count on my one hand how many times I've cramped in the 14 years yeah. that I've had my period. Yeah. But mentally it affects me and emotionally it really yeah. does affect me. I can't run away from that. We already sit with patronizing men uh, in our boardrooms, in our working spaces. Sure. Yeah. We were having the discussion earlier on, <laughs> actually, yes. where we were discussing, where I was saying, um, yeah, so you, it depends on where the, the, the laws and the, and the policies will come from. Usually now we have, you know, in the olden days, policies and laws being written by men, and it'll come from a space where it doesn't, re it's not really empowering for the menstruating person. Mm. But now, if the laws come from us as menstruating people, it can come from an empowering space. It doesn't have to come from a space of, mm. oh, we can just use it and abuse it. Yeah. yeah. So, Dr. Carol, you were told that you weren't able to do some kind of an operation when you were... <laughs> yes. Having a fit. What In fact, when I, when I applied to specialize, uh, at that time I was uh, the only person, woman, yeah. uh, out of 24 uh, specialists in training mm. uh, for this one here, that uh, at Fruit here. And one of the barriers to entry was that you're not going to function as a surgeon uh, when you have a bad day with your period. Mm. What if you're cramping? What if. Uh, you know, your brain just freezes Ceases with to your work. hands. <laughs> and it affects, wow. uh, we were told that it affects hand motor coordination. Wow. Um, and so well, that's instead of doing that, you're going to do that to the person. <laughs> <laughs> that to everybody around. So it definitely was a barrier at the time. And people do think uh, 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 like that, and particularly, and I think this is where I'm with her yeah. on this, and I'm with her with this because it's about redefining patriarchal spaces. Yes. Everything is around male privilege. Yes. Yeah. And uh, anything other than that is seen to be uh, expecting too much. And I'd like to say that there's gender equality, but it's just about gender equity, yes. mm -hmm. because we are different and we need to make the spaces for that difference to be exercised without being thought of as a hus. 
I mean, yeah. uh, the, and it has changed, and I think there has been generational improvement yes. uh, in that I had to fight to be there. Mm -hmm. You can stand here and fight beyond uh, a, uh, within a constitution mm -hmm. that gives us all the same space to talk. We can use terms like binary, we can say mm -hmm. that there's a spectrum, um, and those kind of legislative things mm -hmm. are supportive, but how we take it forward in terms of implementation, in for seeing it change the spaces uh, mm. where we live in, that's the big challenge. And, and anyway, I want to see men handle a period and then come talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> but similarly, I want to see a man push a 3.1 kilogram baby through his urethra. And when they're able to do that, then they can talk to me about being a weak sex yeah. or whatever definition yeah. they have for us. And and I think that we must also remember that, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, the, in, in my profession, uh, people talked about the Wednesday afternoon and golf day. Yeah, so oh. sorry, Doctor. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know what? Times are changing, and the fact that we're having this conversation with such a remarkable woman around the, on the couch, I'm so proud to be in the room with you. But now, unfortunately, we have thank to go. You. Thank you so thank much you. for joining us today on the show. And of course, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same place. Until Good then, night. good night. And God bless. Clover. Another feel-good production.